OK, this is a further demonstration of the Tom Bio productivity tools and specifically the biological record tools. And in an earlier demonstration, I showed you how to um, select a CSV file and display all the records in that CSV file if there was a column uh, with the OS grid reference in. And in this demonstration, I'm going to take that stage further and show you how you can display biological records. That's a CSV file that contains not only grid references, but other information as well, such as taxon names. And for this demonstration, I'm going to choose this CSV file here. This CSV file contains spider and harvestman records for Shropshire. If I go to the record tab at the top here, you can see this is a much richer database than we used before. So as well as the grid reference column here, we've got other columns with other information in like site. And most importantly for our purposes, uh, the taxa down here, the actual species names. So I'll select the grid reference column. This is the first step and as far as we went really last time before I started showing you how to generate maps and atlas maps for all the records at once in a spreadsheet. But this time we don't want to consider all the records at once. We want to consider the individual um, species. So down here I've got a taxon column drop down and I'm going to click in my case the column taxon which contains the species names. And if I go to the taxa tab here and use the make tree button it generates a list of the unique names in that spreadsheet. And I can find any particular species I'm interested in. For example, uh, this lace weaver spider here, Amorobius similis. Check the box, and then using the same functions as we did before, I can create maps for it. So here we have a map of just of Amorobius similis, this lace weaver spider here for Shropshire. Let's zoom to the extent of that so we can see it a bit better. And if I use the standard QGIS information tool, clicking on the dots, you'll see that those records actually contain all the other information that was contained in the spreadsheet for that actual individual record. And if I look at the attribute table up here, QGIS attribute table, you can see all the information just for those records that match that species name, in this case, Amorobius similis. If I want to do another one, uncheck that box, click this. Let's take this one, it's got a few more records in. Amorobius phalanstralis, generate a map for that. And there we have just the records for Amorobius phalanstralis. So you can see how easy it is and quick it is to create individual map layers for individual species. And just as before, you can treat these as ordinary map layers, changing the styles, saving them to permanent layers and so on. So I have complete flexibility about how I treat them here. You're not limited to selecting individual species. So I could create a map, for example, for all the Amorobius species here by selecting them all at once. Let's delete the other maps that are open. And then clicking the button to make a map. And this is all the Amorobius species. Now when you select more than one, it gives it the, a name which matches the name of the spreadsheet. But just because it's an ordinary layer, I can rename that if I want. I could say Amorobius Spa, for example. So it's very, very easy to do, and you have all the functions that you had before. So, for example, um, rather than uh, creating individual points for, for individual species, I could create a map, for example, tetrad map for Amorobius similis. You've seen all this before in an earlier demonstration. So it's dead straightforward. What you have got is another couple of features on the data specification tab um, to make the organization of that tree you see on the taxa tab different. So for example, my um, names in this taxon column are, are Latin binomials. So they can be treated as scientific names and I can tell the software that by clicking this box here. So if I make the tree with that checkbox clicked, then I get a different um, item, or, or rather the species are grouped under their actual uh, genera, which makes this whole tree just a little bit easier to navigate. Furthermore, if you have another column which specifies a higher grouping level, for example, family, or, or in my case, an order, I've got both harvestmen and spiders in the spreadsheet, remember, 
I can select that column, make the tree again, and then they're organized at a higher level according um, to their the value of order. So these are all the harvestmen, the opiliones, again grouped under the different genera. Okay, so that's that. It's very, very straightforward. You've got all the functions you had before in terms of making atlas maps and colouring them up and so on, but now you can treat the individual species differently from your spreadsheet. And in the next demonstration, you'll see ways of making that process really quick if you want to do it as a batch process. So, for example, to create a map for every single species in that, in that spreadsheet without having to do it manually. And you'll see that in the next demo.